crazy but again i've just been so down bad y'all like this is a really 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 bomb wig that i reviewed for you guys the other day but i just literally have been so down bad that like i haven't done anything to make myself look or feel good but my first wig sent me a beautiful um gorgeous gorgeous wig I absolutely love this company. I love them. I love them. I love them. I've just started working with this company, but I'm hoping that we can work together forever because their shit is lit. So they send you a wig stand. Like I took the other one that they sent me in my last package and I just literally dropped it into my luggage. That way whenever I travel, I'm able to sit my wigs on the countertop. Um, when I'm not wearing them, if I have a back of wig and I want to style it or whatever, and basically have a portable um, wig stand, here's what you have. You have one of these bags. You have your tan wig caps, edge chamber. I'm happy they sent this because I actually like this. So I can keep one upstairs in my upstairs bathroom and I can keep one in my downstairs bathroom. And then, of course, you have your gorgeous wig. And then this is a gift card, which is really cool. And then here's my wig. So when you first open it up, this is also great for travel because you can store, you can actually fit like one or two wigs in here if you're traveling or you, you know, just won't be away from home. But again, this one is 18 inches. It feels super natural. I think right now is the perfect time to go into a lot of natural looks because it's about to get busy for a lot of us. You're going back from being on vacation back into full on work mode and you're not going to have time to really worry about your hair but you're still going to look good nice and slayed inside you have one comb on each side like here and here and then you have um a comb in the back with the adjustable straps and the best part about this wig is a full lace wig so the parting is unlimited you can part it anywhere um this one here you can definitely bleach the knots i'm going to show you how to take care of that without having to use any bleach today so you guys are gonna watch me slay this beauty from start to finish gonna prop it on a mannequin head inside out and i'm gonna add my elastic i already measured how much i need and cut it from my spool of elastic now i'm gonna apply it or sew it to the wig if you've watched my most recent tutorial on how I make my elastic bands um, or add them to my wigs you would know this is the exact placement that I love be sure if you try this to not just assume that it's going to go right in front of the combs go ahead and put it on your head and kind of feel for where you want it first and if it matches up with the combs great if your head maybe is shaped a little bit different or the combs are in a different space then just kind of mark where you want your combs to be Either way, I love to do it this way in this angle or direction. I find this is like the most felt proof way to apply the elastic so that it fits and makes my lace lay super duper flat on my hairline. Now before I go ahead and sew the opposite side down, while I have like free range to, you know, access the entire lace, I'm going to go ahead and add my foundation powder to whatever I see lace. Now this is a full lace wig, but if you see behind where I am applying the powder that area really you can't add the powder because there's like a material on top of it but here's mainly where I'll be parting so I went ahead and just covered 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 it with the foundation powder I have this and everything that I use linked in the description bar for you guys to purchase now that we've had that done we're gonna go ahead and go on the opposite side and sew and boom this is what we should have now we're going to go ahead and put it on your head. The flatter your braids or whatever protective style you have under your wig is going to make for the best outcome with your wig. If your hair is in a bun or something bulky underneath, you cannot expect for the wig to lay as flat as you would want. But this is what mine looks like on. The elastic fits perfect the actual wig fits perfect i believe this is a size one cap which fits like 21 or 21 and a half to 22 inch um heads be sure to use a measuring tape if you want to figure out what the size of your head is you literally just take a measuring tape and just measure around from one end to the other and make so you make a circle so at this point we're going to go ahead and tweeze now this is not necessarily a tutorial on how to how to tweeze but they did give you a nice start. You kind of see in the beginning it was pretty gradient and there was a definite indicator of where the baby hair lied. But it still was full. Not too dense but just 
too full to be supernatural, you know? I find that when you use water and the area that you're tweezing is wet, it is much easier to see your work, it's much easier to tweeze, and it's much easier just to make it a faster, easier, more flawless um, process. If I am tweezing a wig that I don't want to get wet for whatever reason, then I definitely don't. But this wig I'm going to be wearing straight. I did not mind wetting it because I promise you by the time it's time for me to start styling the remainder of the hair, the water is going to be dry. It's not like it's just going to be wet and I'm not the blow dry it or anything crazy like that. You can already see that the actual hairline kind of looks natural. It kind of looks coarse um, in a way that my hairline would and I did not even bleach the knots. All we did was use that nice little powder and it kind of helped the wig to look much more natural. Also the color of your cap um, makes a huge difference. Don't go off of the cap, color of cap I have. Go with one that works best for your skin tone because even if you think we're similar sim skin tones, if our undertones are a little bit different, if I'm red and you're a little yellow, it might not work out for you. Now this is where we are. I just tweeze, tweeze, tweeze. I just wanted to thin out the hairline. I didn't want to make any bald spots or tweeze any specific area. I just wanted to make it to where I decrease the percentage of hair, you know, significantly in the area. So now I'm going to cut off the lace. I feel like I'm good enough to go where I am comfortable with cutting the lace. The reason I tweeze the hairline before cutting the lace is because I kind of use the actual excess lace and hold on to it as an anchor while I tweeze and it just makes it comfortable so that you know once you pull or cut this part of the lace off you kind of have to just hold like the ear tabs or just hold the wig down to your head but it's just easier it's easier and it works as a better guide when you leave that lace but it does not mean that you cannot tweeze after you cut this part off because trust and believe um I will you know thin this out even more you know need be or any wig for that matter now the wig fits perfect the only thing is those ears tabs you have the option to cut those off or glue them down in a lot of cases like so the way I'm gonna wear the wig I'm just gonna go ahead and finesse it and it's gonna be flopping but no one will tell because I'm not really going anywhere today now I'm going to go ahead and begin to form my baby hair. Now it's up to you if you want to go ahead and slick down your baby hair before or after you style the remainder of the hair. But just know that if you want to um, do baby hair, it's best to start it off. And when I start, when I say start it off, I mean you know separate it from the rest of the hair so you can style it and ponytail it or whatever you're going to do. Um, cut it down to the length you want it and get it perfectly to the thickness or texture you want to tweeze. Here I feel like this is a great thinness or thickness or density um, probably is the correct term. But if I leave it this thick and then I do swoops, this is going to look thick. So as you cut it down, you can kind of monitor, engage it and see what it will look like and kind of imagine if it's going to be too thick or not. And in this case, I know it's definitely going to be like, you know, huge clumped up hair even though it may look thin to the eye so again I'm just gonna tweeze it or thin it out and this is why it's a great time to take a time with tweezing because if I would just tweeze this down from the very beginning before I formed the baby hair I probably would have thought this was too thin another thing understand that the lace does thin and shed over time so if you get it this thin down especially if you process or bleach the knots over time this is going to shed even more which is why I don't like to bleach the knots all the time because me not bleaching the knots. Um, I've been wearing this hair every single day on Snapchat, on the vlog, and all that. I've been wearing the same wig for almost a week, and um, it has not thinned out any. But if I would have bleached the knots and did this process, I probably would have about half of the hair that's in that baby hair section left. And you guys can see, I thinned it out a little bit more before I formed the baby hair, and even this is just way too thick. It's not going to look natural or pretty at all. And as you guys can see, I was already ready to tame the hair and form the baby hair. It's never too late to go back and make sure that the hair is going to look as natural as possible. You just want to do everything, you know, gradually in baby steps and not just try to do it all at one time. Unless you're comfortable and you know what you're doing. 
Now I'm going to use this bomb, bomb, bomb baby hair brush that I always use. I got this on Amazon and I have a link down below to go ahead and flick my baby hair down. Usually I use the brush side, but if the hair is too thick and clumped, I'll use the comb side to kind of separate the hair so that they kind of look, you know, not too like clumped. Now some people might find this to be too dramatic of a hairstyle as far as baby hair goes. Thin it out a little bit more and cut the baby hair a little bit shorter and you will, you know, get the desired effect. Or even better, just don't use baby hair at all. Now this came with some wig clips. It came with some elastic I could have used and it was a 2 inch elastic like I love. They give you a comb that is embossed with their logo. Some bobby pins. They gave you that wig cap and this is just a little instruction manual with all the information on how to work your wig, style it, you know, use your wig stand and all that greatness. Now this is a step that's optional. I'm using a electric hot comb. I picked this one up from Sally's and I'll, I'm sorry, not Sally's. I had this one from Amazon. I am on the hunt for one that may get a little bit more hot. This one is very heat safe. It gets hot enough to make the wig look natural. As you can see, it's starting to look like the wig is growing out of my scalp. It's a little bit highlighted or lighter, so that kind of is the giveaway. But if you just add a little bit of a little bit more powder to make it, you know, more flesh tone, the actual wig looks like my hair. I've been wearing this wig for about a week, like as I said before, and I've been getting compliments on it. I've been getting people like, you know, you see a little home girl, you see a girl in Foot Locker or whatever, and she's kind of like eyeing me here, like, what is that? But she'll want to ask. I've been getting a lot of that. You know, this is a good one. This one is a really, really, really natural looking wig. It's going to look like an install or your natural hair. Now with the parting, you don't want to tweeze your parting and open it up to the point that it looks like a railroad track. You don't want it to look too thick, but sometimes you might find areas where you want to open it up so that it's not too tight of a part. And that's all I did. Just pulled out very minimal hair. This is a full lace wig again, so you can part it and style it in any direction that you want. I kind of just wanted a rounded out um, parting, like kind of curved parting, I guess you would say. And I really wanted to define the um, side part and make it just look really, really good. So I went ahead and separated it and I went ahead and started the process of flat ironing the hair. Going to fast forward because you guys know how to flat iron. Nothing special at all. Now fast forward, I always do the top portion of the hair last. Even if I don't section the hair as I flat iron, I still just do that top part last, especially if I'm going to do a side bang. And as you guys can see, this hair got bone straight. It wasn't really, you know, it was already straight, but, you know, you just kind of want to smooth it out a little bit. Feel free to add a serum or, you know, whatever product you loved for a little shine and to, you know, control frizz need be. Now I went ahead and flat ironed or actually hot combed that top bang section upside down for a little added body. Now I did add body. What I needed to do here was to um, cut the bang area shorter, maybe about two or three inches off the ends of the bang area for it to kind of give it a little body and give it the height that I needed. And I just wasn't getting that without that. But I love this wig so much that I just wasn't ready to commit to cutting it, even if it was just for a small bang. So I decided I'm going to do half up, half down. Huge difference. I went from no makeup to makeup. And now I'm just going to retouch up the baby hair. One thing about using this edge tamer is you guys know I've been more into the soft baby hair that is not glued or gelled down or doesn't have that, you know, plastic look. I've been into it looking a little bit more soft. Now, going back or looking back at this video, I definitely could have thinned out the baby hair. Not even thinned it out, but just cut it a little bit shorter for a more natural look. The length that I kept it made it a lot more dramatic than, you know, it needed to be. But sometimes it looks good and then you go back a day or two later and you kind of see where you could, you know, where you can make some adjustments or improvements and that's why I find it good to kind of like do your hair or do your makeup and take a picture of yourself in some good lighting and some bad lighting and that kind of will tell you the truth about if your makeup is good, if your hair is good, if your frontal looks good because trust me, I thought my frontal was popping, went into the sunlight at an event and I went in the bathroom or took a picture and that thing was orange or cakey or flaky or whatever and I just was mortified so always do a quick little check before you do the house to make sure everything is unclockable 
Now this is a full lace wig so I could have done more or less as far as this top knot bun goes. I decided this was a perfect amount. I'm going to use that edge tamer to kind of tame the hair so that it has a little bit more of a slick and sleek, you know, look and that all of the flyaways lay down. Now whenever I use this edge tamer, I like to kind of melt it and seal it into the hair with a little bit of heat. This makes for a super duper nice salon quality look. I decided that the remainder of the hair behind the ponytail kind of had a little bit of flyaways and I kind of wanted the sleek shininess of it to match and not just be only on the ponytail. So I went and did the same steps to the remainder of the hair. Then I realized I pulled the parting over just a little bit too much and there was a space right there where the first track starts. Now this is a full lace wig so you can part it anywhere but there is a difference between where the lace is up top and the lace is around the remainder of the hairline and that kind of was one of those little demarcations that you want to go around and not show. Now I think I got the ponytail um, you know as good as I'm going to get it for the night so I went ahead and tied it up with an ouchless hair tie. At this point, if you really want it to be full, you can go ahead and wrap, you know, an additional bundle around the ponytail, or you can take a small piece of the hair that I'm holding in my hand and just wrap it around the ponytail holder. I find that when you do that, it makes for a more finished, professional, you know, looking hairstyle. It kind of finesses it to make it look like you're doing more than what you're really doing. Then I went ahead and bumped the ends. I felt like with it being straight, because this is a more naturally dense wig, I feel like the curls kind of add a little bit of body. Now I'm going to go ahead at the very ends and bump the ends. You cannot bump the ponytail and not bump the ends. It kind of just looks weird and like it doesn't match. So this is kind of a cheat way that I used to do back in the day when I worked a 9 to 5. I would get up in the morning and really not have time to curl my hair because I'm not a morning person to wake up early. And so like I would just kind of like run the flat iron through the, my hair like super quick and then just kind of bump the ends ever so slightly. Just so it kind of just made it look like I was a little bit more done up than what I really was. And it would take like four minutes or less you know and that kind of made the style look a little bit more again done up festive salon ready of course you could make those curls a lot more tight but you know it served the purpose okay so i am back i feel like that took longer than necessary probably because i had to do my makeup you know i gotta beat my face so when i do my slow mos and i do my pictures i can look lit but um i did switch the style as well i feel like i kind of wanted to do the side part with the flip over but when i did that it made me want to cut layers and then i really did not want to cut layers in this one um and then it made me want to curl it so i was like no i don't feel like curling the whole thing all over so let me do a half up half down i really like the way the parting is done it's done very nicely you guys can see that the parting blends um you know fairly well with my skin complexion and that is because of that powder that you guys seen me add but i'm definitely happy with the results of this wig this wig is definitely back to school appropriate for my ladies who are in the professional field um and or in school or things like that or you just don't like a lot of full hair as you guys can see it's not skimpy in a sense that it's like bald but it's definitely a natural style um my first wigs has tons of wigs on the website so if you want something that's more full or dense more dense you can definitely find exactly what you're looking for if you want longer shorter more dense less dense um, you know a different texture a different color they different they, they definitely have something for everybody on their website but this is the one that you know it's hot it's not going to be too heavy if um, you're younger and you don't want to just be too wiggy you want to look natural and just you know pretty this is it this is it for you but i don't want to talk you guys to death make sure you guys check out my first wigs as always i love 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 this one they have some fire some heat i have this one linked in the description bar i also have another tutorial um that i did reviewing one of their wigs for you guys so make sure you check that out 
Also, make sure you're subscribed and you're liking this video if you like it. If you want to see different videos from me, leave comments and suggestions down below on what you want to see from me next. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.